Love knows no bounds, not even species. Sometimes a language barrier makes a bond more precious. The same goes for people who have a special connection to animals. These stories are always fascinating, and one of them is about Neil the lion. He fell in love with a girl and became way too obsessed with his human girlfriend. That's not the first time though. Even a beluga whale developed a crush on a human and would get jealous too. But of course, not all relationships are that complicated. This 79-year-old diver banned sheephead fish are so simple that they're decades old. So let's get started before curiosity gets the best of you. Tina the beluga whale has a crush on a cute zookeeper. Usually dolphins and beluga whales are quite friendly animals. Still, this one gets super jealous when anyone goes near her crush. Beluga whales are very social and love to play with others, and not always with their own kind. This whale in South Korea had difficulty adapting to the environment and changes. Even though the other zookeepers paid a lot of attention to her so that she felt at home, one cute zookeeper paid her extra attention. In fact, he would play with her more than any of the others. That could explain why she feels so safe around him. And that's not all though. This affectionate creature jumps out of the water to kiss the zookeeper every so often. And when someone gets too close to him, she gets jealous. And in retaliation, she would attack other zookeepers by spitting water on them. Sometimes she even ignores the other members of the staff her crush is around. The pretty animal might have a crush on this zookeeper. Still, two other male dolphins adore her completely. So much that they're kept spattered because she gets frustrated by them. Animals and humans really do have a special bond. Jinjing Jing the penguin, who travels 5,000 kilometers to see his friend. Penguins might not have too much interaction because of how far they lie. But when they do, it's always wholesome. Take the friendship between a 71-year-old retired bricklayer and a Magellanic penguin. The bricklayer and part-time fisherman, Wao Pereira de Souza, lives in an island village just outside Rio de Janeiro. He found a small injured Magellanic penguin laying in the sand idly in 2011. The poor animal was covered in oil and was on the brink of dying. Luckily, Joa took note of this and decided to take him in. He cleaned him up and fed him a daily diet of fresh fish to make him stronger and healthier. Just after a week, the penguin and the fisherman had gotten so close that the penguin refused to leave. Joa said that Jing Jing spent 11 months with him and left as soon as his new feathers grew in. But that's not all. The little guy reappeared at the same beach a few months later, spotted Joa fishing and immediately ran over to him. The cute little animal then spent eight months with him and only went back to the coast of Argentina and Chile for breeding. The great part is that this cycle has been going on for the past five years. Joa takes care of the penguin like his own child, and Jing Jing, on the other hand, refuses to let anyone touch him except his one true friend. Hercules the Human Bear There's nothing scarier than encountering a wild bear when you're either camping or spending time in nature. Hercules the bear was born in captivity at a Highland Wildlife Park. However, the park didn't have room to keep another cub, and sending him out into the wilderness meant that he wouldn't be able to survive the pressure of it all. That's when a Scottish wrestler and Robin found out that the cub was available and bought him for only 50 pounds. In just a year, Hercules grew up to 420 pounds. The silly bear didn't know how famous he would get in the near future. His owners, Robin and Maggie, commissioned an hour-long documentary on him called Hercules the Wrestling Bear in 1980 with a budget of about 10,000 pounds. The main goal was to raise public interest in their show, which definitely gave the bear a head start. In fact, this would lead to a life of stardom in Hollywood. Unfortunately, during a Kleenex TV commercial ad, Hercules escaped and got lost for 24 days. And since the bear was so domesticated that he couldn't eat raw flesh, he refused to eat anything. He lost half of his weight and became quite weak, and for some reason, that made his image a lot softer. In the coming years, he left behind his animal instincts and became even more like a human. And this is how he got the name Hercules, the human bear. Now that's a story worth knowing and sharing. Yoriko, an Asian sheephead Rossi, and a 79-year-old diver. When it comes to fishermen and divers, they've seen more of the oceanic world than any other regular people. But this story sounds like it's straight out of a Disney movie. The story starts with Hiroko Arakawa, 
who started diving at the age of 18. During one of his underwater ventures, he met a fish that looked an awful lot like a human. He'd often visit her and spend time together underwater. One day he noticed that the fish, Yorikio, had injured her mouth and was unable to catch food on her own. Despite the injury, she still came to greet Arakawa. The generous diver spent the next 10 days hand feeding the fish and that's what sparked their connection. Decades later, their bond is stronger than ever. Arakawa jokes that both of them are UW BFFs, underwater best friends. Now Arakawa is now 79 years old and he still visits her when he has time. They definitely understand each other despite the language and water barrier. Arakawa often kisses the fish and in return, Yorioko did not hate but accepted it politely. And she doesn't let just anyone do that. Rufus the Couch Kangaroo When it comes to animal friendships, it's a give and take. But when it comes to Rufus the Kangaroo, it's more take than give. Rufus the Kangaroo is a rescue and isn't passionate about the wilderness and exploring it. But what he is passionate about is something all humans can relate to sleeping on the couch and watching TV. Kim Haywood, who runs the Pumpkins Patch Kangaroo Sanctuary in Boston, took in Rufus so he could grow up healthy. However, that backfired when he took a special interest in their couch as soon as she took him in as a mere eight-month-old Joey. Now that he's, he still insists on jumping about his favorite seat and napping there every day. He went viral for his silly hats and many people joked about what a weird dog he was. The family has now accepted that as Rufus grows, he's going to take up the whole sofa. Since Kim runs a sanctuary, she has the privilege of keeping Rufus as a part-time pet. Otherwise, it's illegal in most of all parts of Australia. However, she knows him so well that she can tell when he's getting a bit cranky. After he naps, watches a bit of TV and even munches on grapes, he simply leaves at night, only to come back again at 6 p.m. the next weekend. Christian the Rescue Lion Lions might be the face of fear and strength, but Christian, the lion, will definitely change your image of this apex predator in general. He was born in captivity, but when Anthony Bork came across this little cub, he took him home in his Chelsea flat. He then continued to live in a Kings Road furniture shop. The lion soon became accustomed to the lifestyle of city dwellers and even played with local children in the garden of a churchyard. He'd munch on steak and even go to the glamorous parties. However, he grew a little too big to fit in places where he was used to. That's when Borg decided to send him back to the wild. Along with a few other conservationists, they sent him back to a place in Africa along with another female. The owners were curious if their beloved lion would remember him after all these years and went to visit him. To their surprise and everyone else's too, Christian the lion left right into the arms of his former owner and hugged him in his own animal way. There are some bonds you just can't break. Layla the Penguin Domesticating penguins seems to be a pretty common occurrence, but it's not a recent thing. In fact, in the 90s, there was a king penguin that befriended a whole town. We're talking about Layla, who was one of the weirdest pets anyone could ever keep. After saving him from a fishing net, Layla refused to go back to the waters, and so a Japanese family decided to adopt a little flightless bird. They set up a little air-conditioned room for him and even gave him a little backpack. The family took him to the fish market once, but Layla wanted to go back there every day. To fix that issue, they taught him the way to the market. Layla would then literally walk down the streets just like a regular pet and gulp down any fish that the shopkeepers would give her. Sometimes they'd even give a fish to keep for later. They'd put it in his backpack. When Layla would get too hot, the neighbors would pour some water down on him to cool him down. There's a whole documentary made on him because of how unique and peculiar he was. Deuce, the abandoned giraffe rescued by Miru National Park. When it comes to abandoning their young, the animal world can be quite cruel. If an offspring is weak or even injured right after they're born, their parents might just leave them since taking care of them would be a logical disadvantage. But workflow parks and sanctuaries are here to reduce the chances of abandoned offspring. That's why the giraffe is a special case. Deuce the giraffe was rescued by the staff at Miru National Park in eastern Kenya, where she adapted to the human world faster than any other animal. She'd even sniff at strangers as a way of greeting them, and she also slept next to the staff quarters at night. While in the day, she'd spend her days roaming the area with her partner. 
Not just that, these smart giants can recognize the vehicles the staff use. Most people are shocked to see this relationship between such a huge, gentle giant and such regular humans. Since she never had a family to connect to, she accepted whoever was willing to accept her. Who said animals don't feel the same things we do? Egbert the octopus and Elora the human. Octopuses are the smartest cephalopods out there in the water. They're smart enough to completely maze, get themselves out of tricky containers, and even remember favors done by humans. Not just that, they also have the concept of gift giving. Sometimes bonds with animals other than the domesticated ones can bloom without even humans trying. Elora Kustra, a diver, found a pygmy octopus living in a shell on the sea floor of Glover's Reef. When she saw the little creature, she was excited to befriend him and offered him a little fish but he got scared and moved away. However, after a few tries, he pulled on the diver close to his home. On the next visit, Alora brought him a whole jar of fish that he opened all by himself. Later on, he disappeared for a while to a less crowded area on the sea floor. When she finally found him again, Egbert kept pulling on her hand onto a trunk under the water. She didn't understand at first, but still pushed it to the side. That's when she realized that she was basically helping Egbert hunt. Despite their little breaks, Egbert and Laura always found a way back to each other. Kojak, the crocodile living in the backyard. When it comes to wild animals, crocodiles are the biggest man-eating machines. And the only thing anyone will tell you is to stay away from them. Apparently not everyone takes that advice seriously. Here's an Indonesian family that has a crocodile as a pet. Erwan saw a bunch of young boys torturing a little tiny croc and he instantly came to its rescue. He showed the boys away and put the tiny croc in his pocket to take it home. They kept the beast in a small pool of water in their backyard. Kojak, the crocodile, doesn't mind spending all of these days in the small channel of water the family's backyard has. Sometimes the family hangs their clothes at the back and their kids play ball games near the crocodile too. He's lived with this family for about 20 years and has never ever tried to hurt them in the slightest. Having a huge croc in your backyard might seem weird to a lot of people, but in Indonesian culture, keeping birds and fish brings a sense of harmony and tranquility. Tippi Hedren and her lion best friend. Tippi Hedren, a talented actress, had a very peculiar life, one that not many can say that they've experienced. She grew up around 400 pound lions roaming about in her house. In fact, Neil the lion even slept with Tippy and her husband in bed at times. But after years of living with a giant lion, she said that it was the biggest mistake of her life. There wasn't anything particularly wrong with their relationship. In fact, Neil was very attached to their whole family, including their little daughter. However, one night during a dinner party, Neil tried to attack a guest at their party. This left the guest and a few others with quite a few injuries. That's when Tippi Hedren realized that having a lion entirely in love with her under the same roof was extremely dangerous. Not because of the inherent nature of the lion, but because of how possessive they can get when dominance is involved. She was more worried about respecting it and treating it like a wild animal, not like a pet. After many years together, Neil's relationship with the family inspired her to make a movie about how keeping wild animals as pets is unfair to them. Toldo, the gift-giving cat. To show how much we love those we've lost, we humans have a tradition of taking flowers to their grave. It also means we haven't forgotten their contributions and legacies. In a story enough to melt even the coldest of hearts, this cat named Toldo took precious little gifts to his master's grave for over 11 months without missing a day and could visit several times a day. The love shown by this cat is simply extraordinary and is what legends are made of. After the passing of its master, Renzo Lozelli, Toldo would go up on his grave and give gifts. Its master's wife, Ada, said that the cat would usually bring twigs, leaves, plastic cups, toothpicks, and just about anything it could find on its way to the grave. I guess the cat couldn't afford flowers and understood its master would appreciate those items regardless of what you might think. This act continued for months, but after a while, the round trip to and from the cemetery tired Toldo out and, and the cold gave him bronchitis. Now it's been forced to stay indoors more and continues to channel all of that love to Lazelli's wife. 
Dog watches over Master's grave for six years. When Michael Guzman adopted a German Shepherd that he would name Captain in 2005, he definitely didn't know he was going to die in about a year and most certainly didn't imagine his dog would be the one to grieve his death the most. But life is always packed with unexpected happenings. Unfortunately, Guzman died in 2006. Shortly after his death, his dog, Captain, also went missing. Double tragedy had struck the family. They looked everywhere but couldn't find him. Luckily, they found him the next day near Guzman's grave, barking and crying. Little did they know how this would be his new favorite place. He kept watch of the grave diligently for the next six years, never totally leaving the spot. And once it was six in the evening, every day, he would go and sleep on Guzman's grave and not leave till the next morning. In fact, one of Guzman's sons thought the dog would never leave the grave till it died. We're all glad Captain was able to get over his loss after grieving for so long. The sweetest bedtime routine. Enough with the burials and loyal grieving pets. Let's look at a more heartwarming story of a smart dog everyone dreams of having. Baron is a German Shepherd dog that always tucks his brother in for the night. And the duo has the sweetest bedtime ritual you'll come across today. They begin preparing for bed by saying their prayers. Baron tucks Alexander in and then they share a little bedtime story. Some kisses goodnight before Baron finally shuts off the light in Alexander's room. Interestingly, Baron does a lot more than just give his brother the best bedtime moments around the house. He can also load the dishwasher, make coffee, and help his brother in putting his toys away after playing. Isn't that simply incredible? Squirrel refuses to leave a man after being saved by him. This guy saved a squirrel that would later become his pet and his best friend. They got the squirrel after a friend called his wife about a baby squirrel her cat had caught in its mouth. They took care of her and fed her, and from then on, she became a part of the family and wouldn't leave even after spending over a year with the couple. The husband is her favorite person in the world. He also doubles as her favorite resting place and nuts treasury. She just loves being around him during car rides, on the beach, at home, and everywhere, literally. He explained that he intended to save her and return her to the wild, but she wouldn't leave even when given the chance to run free or follow her wild instincts. So they're both enjoying each other's company and serving us heart-melting moments. All right, comment down below if you too have a special relationship with an unusual animal. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to Forever Green, and hit that bell icon for more. We'll see you in the next one, friends.